Gracious God, speak into our hearts the truth of our baptism, that we may know you as our hope. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> as you know, I always like to start with a funny joke or story, and two men were playing golf at a country club one day, and one man was winning easily. Furthermore, he was not only winning, he was enjoying his victory and really rubbing it into his opponent who suffered silently as they played. Afterwards, in the locker room, they settled up financially around the uh, part of the defeat. And then as the loser was getting dressed, the winner noticed that that person looked a lot like an Episcopal priest. Now the winner felt embarrassed and said, I'm really sorry, Father. I, I had no idea you were a priest. To which the Episcopal priest said, well, yes, I am, but just to let you know that there are no hard feelings, why don't you bring your parents by the church and I'll marry them for free? <laughs> you got to watch those Episcopal priests, I'm telling you. I'd like to talk today about God as our hope and that God, as we know God, is always faithful. And as I think back over this year, you know, in January, you kind of look back and rejoice and think about, it has been a tremendous year for me. Certainly coming here would, would top the, the list. And one of the things I notice and really rejoice in is the level of commitment of this parish. Where there is a program need, the immediate response is, let's get it done, let's do it. And that's been one of the most surprising parts of being a part of this community. And I thank you for that commitment. We are indeed a great parish, and we're going to do even greater things. As I look back over my time with you, certainly the celebration of new ministry tops the list as a, a monumental moment. And I remember as we began that service, uh, we opened with the fanfare for the common man. And the gong sounded, and the bass drum pounded, and many of you suddenly sort of woke up or <laughs> took notice and shocked. And I, an image came to mind, especially as that bass drum pounded at the beginning of that song, that, that we were a community gathered after taking a long two-year journey to this point. And we were pounding the earth, demanding a celebration. It was our will to celebrate, and our prayer was to have God bless it. That image for me is also the image of baptism. As I think about adults who come to the sacrament of baptism, they come after a prolonged journey, usually filled with many struggles and some suffering. And they come to this place in their life where they've tried fulfillment at work, they've tried meditation, they've tried healthier living, but none has reached the deep level to which they now know of God's love in their hearts. And they come to this point, they come to this point asking to become one with Christ, hoping to become one with Christ, asking to receive the Holy Spirit in their life. And the gathered community comes around, and it is their intention as well. We come together, we, we pound the earth in a way, we demand that God be here and bless this intention, that this person becomes truly one with Christ today and receives the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I know when we pray as a gathered community, our God is a great God and our God is faithful and hears our prayers. And that in candidate clearly becomes one with Christ in that moment and receives the blessing of the mystery of God's love. There's a message that is forged into the hearts of those who are being baptized through the waters of the Holy Spirit. And that message is simply this, you are my beloved. It's the words that were said by God over Christ at his baptism, you are my beloved. This simple phrase captures God's deep love for us and that promise that God will always be with us. Back in September on the St. Andrew's net, I posted a blog about what this oneness feels like with Christ. And an author named Henry Nowen wrote about it, and I'd like you to hear it and to take it in as a reminder 
of your oneness in Christ which you experienced in your baptism and you now draw from. I have called you by name from the beginning. You are mine and I am yours. You are my beloved. On you my favor rests. I have molded you in the depths of the earth and knitted you together in your mother's womb. I have carved you in the palms of my hands and hidden you in the shadow of my embrace. I look at you with infinite tenderness and care for you with a care more intimate than that of a mother for her child. I have counted every hair on your head and guided you at every step. Wherever you go, I go with you, and wherever you rest, I keep watch. I will give you food that will satisfy all your hunger and drink that will quench all your thirst. I will not hide my face from you. You know me as your own, as I know you as my own. You belong to me. Nothing will ever separate us. We are one. From the moment of our baptisms, we live from this feeling of closeness on. And when crisis hits, we turn to God. And as we turn again and again to God for help, we become, we know God or come to know God as our hope. Scripture tells us that God is faithful and that God hears our prayers. For many of us, Christmas and New Year's was not a joyful experience. While the culture seemed to be celebrating, filled with laughter, for many of us it was a struggle just to get out of bed. Questions arise within us about why this is happening, questions about fairness or questions about self-worth, why this is happening to me. And we dig for deeper answers. We turn to God for hope. We pray to God saying, God, calm this storm. Save me from this pit. Breathe a new life into my tired spirit. Give me the strength to bear all that I am shouldering. 